All right, I'm here with another discussion type video, this time looking at uh, something I get asked somewhat frequently in the comments and something I throw around in, in uh, collection type videos as well. Um, talking about, you know, a lot of times in collection videos I'll say, oh, this is, you know, a top five game, this is a top 10 game, top 20 game of all time for me. Um, but I don't often, <laughs> you know, I throw that out a lot, it feels, but I don't often elaborate, you know, what are some of my favorite games of all time. Um, I get asked a lot in the comments, uh, like, what's my favorite game of all time? And I don't really like doing that. I don't like narrowing it down just to one thing. Uh, so I don't usually tend to, I usually tend to give a list. Um, and this is going through now. I'm going to go through my top, what I would say is like a, you know, my 10 favorite games of all time. This list could change on any given, you know, <laughs> any given day, really. Um, it could, it could change depending on my mood. It could change depending on, you know, a new game that were to come out. Uh, but this is like, you know, 10 of my favorite games of all time. Um, I don't really have too many rules for this. I may be breaking a few rules. I don't, this is my list. Uh, I'd love to see everyone's list in the comment below. It doesn't need to be your top 10 favorite, but maybe just a list of some of your all time favorite games. Um, I don't have a whole lot of super retro games and I don't really have anything past like PS1 and N64 era. Um, if I were to like open this up to my top 20, there'd be more games, there'd be more retro games. Um, but you know, my top 10, this is mostly stuff that resonates me with me more. I don't, I didn't grow up as much with retro stuff. Um, so I grew up in like the, I grew up in the, uh, like I started playing games more often. Even if my first game system was a Genesis, I started playing games more often in the, um, GameCube days, uh, which starts off with our first video or first game here. I'm going alphabetically through this list. So the first game is Animal Crossing, the original one for the GameCube. Uh, obviously, Animal Crossing is, is still an incredibly relevant franchise, but uh, this is at least in the United States where it started. Um, and I don't, there's, I mean, this is the exact copy that I bought uh, when I was a kid. I remember paying 20 bucks for it at Target. <laughs> and um, I still have the memory card in there. Uh, for some reason, as a kid, I saw that they came with a memory card, but then I saved my town on my memory card that I had as a kid anyway, because I'm, I don't know, I'm an idiot. Uh, but I did have another, uh, town that I would, <laughs> that I would, uh, go over to and harvest fruit, and then all my villagers moved away. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, the original Animal Crossing is a lot of fun. I remember going to my friend's house. This is where I originally found out about it. His older brother bought a copy, and I just remember him I remember my friend had a, a house on the town and I just remember him sh like just showing me the game and there's something about it I was like oh that's cool you get to have your little town and get to go around and do stuff uh, I was just really kind of fascinated by it so I remember I went out shopping with my parents one day and I just went and bought the game because uh, I just thought it was so awesome and it it became a bit of a problem I kind of got addicted to it when I was a, a kid uh, I kind of became like infatuated by it but the original Animal Crossing uh, even though there's more features and all the other, you know, New Horizons and New Leaf have all these new features and everything. Um, there's something about the original game. I th maybe it was just because I played it as a kid, but it just feels a lot more small. It's, it feels a lot smaller. It feels a lot stranger. It's a lot. I, it's a pretty strange game. Uh, the graphics are definitely kind of odd because it's like this. It's a and port of an N64 game. But yeah, there's just something about it. And I still think the original game is great, even if there's more features in the newer games and I've still been playing the series since the only one I didn't play too much of was the DS game I kind of just skipped to the kind of just skipped to the Wii one um right after which I also have a ton of time in but man I have endless hours in this game and it is still a classic uh next up Final Fantasy 7 uh I don't know something about it about me feels like I want to be more of a contrarian, but Final Fantasy VII is my favorite Final Fantasy game. I know that's normie. Uh, I just like the cast of characters the most. I like. I'm not into high fantasy too much, uh, but I do like this like cyberpunk uh, inspired fantasy world more. Uh, that's just me though. Um, I don't know. I just something about the story, uh, Sephiroth and Cloud and just all that. It's great. And I talked about the remake recently on my uh, what I've been playing video. I think it's great. I don't. I'll have to see if, you know, the, the remake trilogy, or if it becomes more than a trilogy, ends up being surpassing the original, in my opinion. But right now, the original is, is fantastic. It still holds up fantastically. The character models are a little blocky, but they have these awesome, 
like uh, pre-rendered backgrounds that still look great. The pre-rendered backgrounds are so iconic. You can look at like any pre-rendered, you can look at any pre-rendered background in that game and you say, oh, this event happened here. This is what happened here. Oh, I remember this. This is where this happened. It's so cool. Um, the music's fantastic. It's so, it's so iconic, first of all, but it's also so cool how just long some of these tracks are and, you know, it's, it's awesome. Final Fantasy VII holds up pretty much. I mean, a lot of people like to look down on it. People, it's kind of popular to be, oh, that's the most popular of the series, so it's a bad one. Um, and I might be just weird with Final Fantasy because I really like Ten as well. I liked Fifteen a lot as well, so maybe I just have bad taste in Final Fantasy. Um, but yeah, I think Final Fantasy VII is fantastic. Uh, and definitely a classic, and if you can get past the weird-looking character models and sometimes strange dialogue... Um, kind of somewhat badly translated dialogue. Highly recommend going back to the original. Uh, I would definitely recommend the remake as well. I think it, what we have so far of it is fantastic. Um, even if it does, I think you're going to be, even if you do play that, I think you're going to enjoy playing it a lot more if you've played the original. Um, and I think you can play it on like the PS4 and the Switch and the Xbox and PC. And they have like different little cheats you can do to uh, just make yourself win pretty much every fight if you want to just skip through it and you don't want to really play an old RPG like that. And that's not how I would want to play, but the option is there. Um, this one also might make me a normie. I don't care. Uh, Ocarina of Time. Ocarina of Time's awesome. It's This game still is pretty mind-blowing to me. That If you look at a lot of contemporary games in this time, um, especially on the N64, uh, made by other developers. They just are absolutely blown away um, by this game. Just the scope of this game, just the content of this game. This game's awesome. I mean, I, best I, best dungeons in a Zelda game. I don't care what anyone says. Best dungeons in a Zelda game. That lineup of dungeons is fantastic. Um, you know, the story, it's simple, but it's classic. Uh, it's it's so good just you know the events that happen in it as well are so memorable uh i know there's you know other people like other zelda games better and there is a zelda game i do like better than this one that is in the top 10 list but i mean ocarina of time it still holds up immensely uh hand you know big big ups to the uh 3ds remake which is fantastic i think that's the definitive way to play the game um, the 3DS remake is really good as well. Uh, and it, you know, the quality of life updates make that game just ridiculous. Uh, Ocarina of Time is still so good to this day though. And I highly, highly recommend playing it if you somehow haven't. Um, but you know, we're not done with Zelda yet. One of my favorite series. So, uh, two entries on the list. Wind Waker. Wind Waker was my first Zelda, so it's probably why it's my favorite that's the old meme of, you know, this is the first game that you played in the series. Uh, it's going to be your favorite. Um, another one that my friend uh, who showed me Animal Crossing also showed me this one. Um, he, I remember he, we, I would go to his house and he was just playing it. I'd just sit there watch him play it. And I was like, this game's pretty cool. You get to sail around all the different islands. This is pretty awesome. Uh, and then I just kind of never thought of that game. And then when I got into game collecting, actually, I went... And the two first games I bought, I just talked about this in the Q&A video last week, but the first two games I bought were Metroid Prime and, Prime and Wind Waker. Uh, so that's kind of what got me into collecting as well. So that's pretty cool. Wind Waker so still good. Still so good, though. Um, I would recommend probably the HD version on Wii U, but the GameCube one's still incredible. It's incredible how good this game looks still in the GameCube version. Uh, the GameCube's... The first party GameCube games, like those games don't age. Mario Sunshine still looks fantastic. Wind Waker still looks fantastic. Metroid Prime still looks incredible. Those games still look so good. Um, but Wind Waker, I, I know a lot of people like to hate on the art style, especially back in the day, um, Yeah, as the story goes. But I think it's so charming. I think it's so cool. Uh, it's definitely a cool take on the series. Uh, just kind of the way it ties into the uh, past games as well is so cool. Uh, it's awesome. Wind Waker is so good. Uh, definitely a classic. Um, and the, the HD version is so great. That game looks incredible as well. Uh, the one, the biggest, and everyone's talking about the ports they want to the Switch, and I would, you know, I, no, I, I wouldn't kill for it, but I would love a Wind Waker HD, Twilight Princess HD port. Um, more so for Wind Waker HD, but I, I haven't played it. I haven't played through Wind Waker since 
I guess since 2013 when the Wii U one came out. Um, and I'd kind of itching to play it again. I guess I could play the Wii U one, but I feel like it's coming to the Switch soon. Uh, next up, this is going to, whatever it makes up for my uh, opinion of me having a normie opinion on Zelda and Final Fantasy, well, this is definitely a strange one. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 2? Uh, this is my favorite Metal Gear Solid game. Um, I also, <laughs> I also like really like Rising, although I think that's just because it's a great Platinum game, but I might just like Raiden a lot. Um, yeah, Metal Gear Solid 2 is awesome. Uh, it's, I think it's Kojima at his best. I think it's Kojima at his most Kojima-y. Um, and, you know, I really enjoy his work for, <laughs> for the most part. Uh, even if I don't always really crazy about it, I'm not crazy about Metal Gear Solid 4. Um, I like the gameplay of Metal Gear Solid 5, but the story, <laughs> for what, what was of the story, what little story there was, nah, not so great. Uh, but I really liked, like, Death Stranding. I thought that was really interesting. But Metal Gear Solid 2, I think, is probably in my is in my opinion i don't know if it's i could i can't even really say it's like the best metal gear solid game because i would even say that metal gear solid 3 by far is a more simple story it's a more probably a more compelling story from a lot of angles but metal gear solid 2 there's something about it just i think it's how weird it is um there's a really great like dialogue there's a great monologue at the end um that's like oddly <laughs> oddly predicted the modern day and this game came out in 2001, and there's just so many, like, uncanny predictions of the modern day. I feel like that, and you see all the people, all the things in, like, China where the guys are delivering packages just, like, on Death Stranding. And I feel like Kojima might know more than he lets on. Uh, this this man may be able to predict the future. But Metal Gear Solid 2, I think, is just... I love the, the fake-out. You have that awesome tanker section at the beginning with Snake, and then you get a fake-out, and you're starting to play as Raiden. Um, funny story, actually, since I'm a little bit, I'm a bit younger than a lot of game uh, collectors and I didn't grow up with the PS2, I didn't get into Metal Gear Solid until like 2011, um, I guess 2012 maybe, it's been a while, but I f first played Metal Gear Solid 2 on the PS3 HD collection, uh, which is a, the definitive way of playing it right now, um, and I didn't, somehow I just didn't know about the Raiden fake out. I had somehow lasted like 11 years without spoilers on the Raiden fake out. So I'm playing the tanker just like someone in 2001 would have. And then I get to the Raiden and I'm like, oh, this is okay. This is a weird little part. When am I going to stop playing as him? And then you never stop playing as him. Um, <laughs> I don't know how I somehow got all throughout everything without seeing that spoiler. I guess it was a simpler time, uh, which is weird to think. But that's kind of a long time ago now. And the internet's definitely changed. To a, but... Yeah, I, that is kind of a funny story that I was able to avoid that spoiler. But yeah, I really like that. I think it's really clever. There's a lot of like really interesting, a lot of interesting messages in the game. And yeah, I think it is kind of strangely able to predict <laughs> the modern day um, in the weird Kojima way. There's weird lines like we managed to avoid drowning is a classic one. Uh, it's so good though. It's, I don't know. There's something about, I think it, I like it so much just because of how much weird and goofy stuff is in it. Uh, but how genuinely interesting it is, uh, in general. This one might be a little bit of a cop out. Um, this right here is the Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy. Uh, the first three games, which originally came to the Game Boy Advance in Japan, uh, we got them first on the DS here in the United States and in the West. And uh, this is a port for the 3DS. I would recommend, I haven't gotten a physical copy of it yet, but I'd recommend the HD port that's now out for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Switch and PC. Um, I mean, if I have to pick one of these games, I would pick uh, the third game. Although the first game is an absolute classic. Uh, but you're not going to go wrong playing this entire trilogy. These games are so fun. Um, they have such a great like overarching story, especially as you play them as a trilogy. Uh, the characters are so memorable and so funny. And so just it's another thing of just like really weird and very strange. Um, there's something about it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, these games are all time, all time classics. Um, and the series continues to go on. There's four, five and six and uh, hopefully seven soon. <laughs> and those are all good as well. But I think the original trilogy is this series at its peak. It's fantastic. Capcom continues to rely on it and ports it to everything under the sun. Um, but yeah, I, I can't talk about it too much without spoilers, but it's really great series. Uh, court, you, you know, it's a, it's a visual novel, so you might not, and kind of like, almost like a point and click, more so a visual novel though. 
Um, so you might not enjoy it if you don't like stuff like that. I like stuff like that quite a bit, so it's definitely on my alley. Um, but so, so good. So, so much personality, so much fun. Um, I'll leave it at that. I mean, that's highest recommendations. Moving on here. Uh, definite one of my favorites. You guys would know it. Persona 4 Golden. Um, the Vita's crowning game. <laughs> Uh, I like the Vita a lot, but this is, I mean, far and away the best game on there. I can't believe it's still on the Vita. I can't believe they haven't ported it to, like, PS4 or Switch or something. Um, but the Golden, I would say Golden is definitely the best iteration of this game. And, I don't know, this game is really great. There's something about games that are relaxing that I really like. Um, like, a game that can just be kind of low-key, <laughs> has nice, kind of relaxing, pleasant music. The voice acting is kind of relaxing. It's not screaming all the time. It's not, you know, constant nonsense. There's something about that as well. Uh, I think of games like Trails of Cold Steel or like AI The Somnium Files where it's kind of like that uh, as well. But this game's fantastic. Uh, incredible. The way this, all the systems work together. Uh, the way you have, you know, the school life time type stuff. And it, it can work in with how your personas operate. Um, and all that. It's so cool. It's such a great concept. The story is, is, is maybe not my f favorite. Per it's not my favorite persona story. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a second, but I like the cast a lot. The story, while it could be better, is still good. Um, it's just, it's just great. Uh, and this game is another one. There's some games that just absolutely fascinate me. And I just want to learn everything about it. Uh, like the original animal crossing like this, uh, just, the way everything, it's just incredible to me how Atlas can make, and Atlas is a pretty small company, all things considered. They're bigger now that they're acquired by Sega, but when they originally put this out, and especially put the original PS2 game out, they weren't that big. Um, but it's incredible how they can just make these massive games. Uh, they're so well paced where it feels like every time you sit down to play the game, be it if you play it for 45 minutes, play it for half hour, 45 minutes, or you play it for like three hours, you're going to be hitting something satisfying to do. You're going to be getting a good story story bit. You're going to be getting, a, a, you know, an interesting, you know, a social link event. Uh, it's just great gameplay loop, great gameplay hook, and it keeps on going. So awesome. Such a classic. Um, and yeah, I'm going to do the two series again thing because... I would say Persona 5 Royal is one of the most perfect JRPGs of all time. Um, the original game, I think, is great, the original Persona 5, but it definitely had some problems that were a little bit irritating. And this game fixes pretty much all of those problems to a point where they're... At least the most irritating things aren't there anymore. But this game's fantastic as well. It took everything from the previous game and just, you know, multiply it by a thousand. It's incredible. Uh, the art style is fantastic, and just the way everything everything pops on the screen, the way everything looks, everything in this game looks cool, it looks good, the menus are flashy, and they're fantastic, and they look awesome, and it's definitely not a case of uh, style over subst substance. Um, I feel like, you know, another series I like that I'm going to compare it to is Danganronpa. Uh, it definitely has a problem sometimes of, of style over substance, but this game all of its style has a purpose. It all has, you know, a reason. And it's so good. Uh, it's definitely, you can see there's more budget, obviously. It's also a PS4 game, not a PS2 game. Um, so it's much more cinematic than Persona 4. I think the story is way more fleshed out. It's way, it's a hu way huger game. The original Persona 5 is like a 90-hour game can, compared to Persona 4 Golden, which is about 50. And then, then Royal is about a 110-hour yeah, game. So... Definitely getting into something with these the length of these games, but they're fantastic. And I can't talk too much about these games without spoilers. Uh, like I said, though, the way they have the, the social systems in the game where you make friends and you have different characters, um, they definitely improved that in this game as well because they add, they add like these cool abilities. So you meet, I'm trying to think, uh, you meet the, like the Shoji player and she can teach you different strategies that you can then use in battle, stuff like that, uh, different perks that you can use, different ways you can save time in the game. Uh, so clever. I love the, I know it's a breaking point for a lot of people, but I love the time management aspect. It's almost like a sim in some sense where you have to, you have some time, you have to manage your different, you know, different obligations you want to do 
whether you want to go to a job and make money and up your social stats, which is another thing. You have social stats. You have like 10 million stats. Uh, definitely very deep RPGs, but they're very accessible on how they work, how everything melds together. Uh, really smartly done. Um, but yeah, everything about Persona 4 Golden, which I think is an excellent game. And I, I thought, I don't think I should put Persona 4 Golden on this list. I'm going to have Royal on there. Uh, but I'm thinking, this is my list, and Golden is still fantastic. But yeah, I would say Royal is a uh, near-perfect JRPG for all intents and purposes. Uh, absolutely stellar. Getting to the last few games here. Um, one I talk about a lot, and uh, another excellent, excellent, excellent game. Oh, doesn't fit up there. Is Silent Hill 2. Uh, it's so tragic that the Silent Hill series is pretty much what happened to it. Because um, 1 and 2 are so cool. Uh, I have actually not played 3, <laughs> which is crazy. You'd think, oh, Silent Hill 2, one of, my favorite games of, one of my favorite games of all time. I should go play Silent Hill 3, and I just haven't. Um, <laughs> I don't know, I'm stupid. Uh, but ever, ever since 3, I, I, everyone knows that everything has gone downhill. Um, they make some horrible movies that have nothing to do with anything. It's It's... A sad state of affairs. I think we we I think we might be in for some interesting times though at, coming ahead. Um, and every time I play one of the Resident Evil remakes, uh, two and three, I've uh, played through both of those. I think those games are both great. But especially in three, some of the times when you're in like a, the town area, um, I always think like, man, I wish this was Silent Hill. I'd love to see a Silent Hill game, either a remake of the originals or a new one in that you know over the shoulder. Uh, I'd even take first person style, but I'll talk about Silent Hill 2 now. Um, although I do feel like we're going to get something Silent Hill related soon. And rumors have kind of been bubbling up lately. Um, yeah, Silent Hill 2 is fantastic. Uh, this game is like is like a masterclass in, in cool atmosphere and cool like environments, creepy environments, uh, surreal environments. It's so strange. It's so uncanny. Um, the weird voice acting makes it just more odd. It makes it more, a bit more concerning. It's just so cool. It's such, it's such an interesting world. Just such an interesting concept. The big twist at the end, uh, is crazy. <laughs> um, not really that crazy, not that hard to believe, but, uh, definitely paints the whole game in a new light and makes it more interesting to go back for repeat playing, um, I mean, this is a game you have to experience for yourself. I know people don't like going back to games with the tank controls and everything, but um, if you can get past that, you're in for a great time. Um, and I would recommend the original release on the PlayStation 2 and the Xbox. I probably wouldn't recommend the HD collection. I don't think those are as bad. And I've played through Silent Hill 2 on the HD collection. I don't think those game, those are as bad as people say, or at least the 2 HD. Um, because they've been patched for the most part by now, but... Uh, doesn't quite nail the original game's atmosphere and everything. And uh, they have like new voice acting, which isn't bad actually, but I think the original release is still the best version. Uh, but such a cool game. And I really like, so one of the, my favorite things in games is just being able to explore a weird world. Like go out and just, I like to go just walk around and read the little papers and just look at stuff. And uh, Silent Hill 2 has one of the coolest, like just strange, surreal worlds to explore. And the final game here, this might be a little bit weird. This one may be a little bit out of left field. Um, this has actually pushed off a game that I would have probably put on this list um, before this game came out. I definitely would have put on this list, but it kind of pushed it off. Uh, and I think this game is incredible. Super Mario Odyssey. Super Mario Odyssey is probably the most fun game <laughs> ever made. Um, I know that's kind of a huge statement to make, but it's so much fun. Like The worlds are so great. Uh, it looks graphically incredible. It looks so clean and so awesome. Um, the worlds are so fun to explore. I know a lot of people don't like going the more kind of meaning menial uh, moons, I guess they are in the game. Uh, a lot of the moons in the game, there's a ton of them. It's Some people say it's more quality over quantity, or quantity over quality, sorry. Um, which I can agree with. I can see where that statement would come from. Uh, it is definitely a lot of moons, and a lot of them are kind of meaningless uh, but just exploring the worlds, the way Mario moves, controlling Mario is so good. Um, he's, he feels so good to just, you know, jump around and, you know, roll around. And especially with that, throwing out the hat around and doing all the different tricks. So fun. Um, this, yeah, I mean, the worlds are so good. The music's so good. 
Uh, the music's like <laughs> next level. Um, so good. I mean, yeah, it is a kind of a crazy statement to say this is maybe the most fun game of all time. Uh, but it's definitely definitely a treat to play. Um, definitely my favorite game on the Switch at the moment. And this would have bumped up Super Mario Sunshine. Uh, so once again, maybe I'm just weird with my opinions. Because uh, Super Mario Sunshine for a long time was my favorite 3D Mario game. I would say that it's probably maybe the worst 3D Mario game. Um, not counting like 3D World. It's definitely not better than the Galaxy games. And I would say it's probably better than 64. Sorry, guys. Uh, but... I think Mario Odyssey just kind of claimed that throne um, or threw, threw his little cap on the throne. I don't know where I was going with that joke. Um, but yeah, that's it. Uh, you know, obviously, like I said, these are my 10 favorite games that that list could change, you know, day to day basis. Uh, maybe this would something I could revisit in a few years and try to do it again and maybe see um, if there would be any interesting shakeups that we would see move in here. But at the current moment, um, I would say that if you had to ask me what my favorite game of all time is, I would not give you a definitive answer, but I'd probably point you towards these 10 games as like some of my all time favorites. Um, and definitely if you've not played any of them, they get my highest recommendations. Uh, it would be interesting as well. I think you'd get a more varied list. Uh, you get a, definitely a more varied list if you were to l look at my like top, um, yeah, get a little. If you were to look at my like top twenty to ten, if you were to look at my top twenty, I feel like that list would have probably some weird, oddball picks as well. But I think this video the video has gone on long enough. Uh, so, like I said, make sure to leave a comment down below with your favorite games of all time. Um, leave a like if you enjoyed. Uh, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Gaming, and I will see you next time.